What is up everybody? Well, with the release of the newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, which you can watch right now on Netflix, of which I have reviewed and ranked all of the films, now it is time to talk about the man himself, Leatherface, of which we have nine different variations of Leatherface. I did this ranking back when Leatherface came out, maybe a year or so after I did those rankings. Seemed like a cool idea. And uh, you guys seem to have liked it, so I wanted to update that ranking with this new version that we've gotten with the 2022 film. Now, the criteria I'm kind of going on is not only the performance, but also the look of Leatherface, how the movie used him, and of course, how much I like the movie itself. So all of those kind of scrambled together have given me what I would consider my preference for Leatherface from the ninth, the worst, all the way up to the one that quite literally could follow me into my nightmares. So, number nine, starting off with the bottom of the barrel, the absolute worst version of Leatherface that I hope we ever have to suffer through. Should be no surprise, and that is the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw 4, The Next Generation. This is one of the worst aspects of the movie. I mean, one of the only redeeming factors of this film is Matthew McConaughey, but one of the worst parts of it that even if you can sift through the weird storyline and the terrible acting, all of that, is that this version of Leatherface is an absolute bitch. This is the least intimidating, least scary, least effective version of this character by a country mile. They go in a really weird direction, really amping up the transvestite side of him, uh, really making him wear like women's makeup. There's even, even the cover of the movie shows him like in drag, which was a, a small little tiny, tiny nugget of an element in the first film that was done to a really creepy effect to where they were almost making Leatherface pose as the mom for the family for the dinner scene. And there's something really eerie and creepy and disturbing about that. Here, it's played as a joke. I mean, Leatherface, ah! There's even a scene where Renee Zellweger is like, shut the fuck down and shut up. And it's just like, dude, we're supposed to be scared of this fucking guy. What are you guys doing? Number eight for me is going to be from Leatherface, not Texas Chainsaw 3, but the prequel Leatherface, the one that we got just about, what, four years ago, something like that. Now, I'm a bigger fan of this movie than it seems a lot of people are. I actually like the really different approach they take to a Texas Chainsaw film, and I think that the character work is done a little bit better than some of these movies. It's certainly a better, well-made movie than a handful of these films. But the central premise of this prequel is we're going to follow these people that have escaped from this asylum, and along this bloody road trip, one of them is going to become the mentally disturbed Leatherface. Now, the mistake that the movie makes is if you promise something like that, obviously, if you're following whodunit standards, they have to have a red herring, and the red herring is the obvious choice for who would be Leatherface. Build, size, intimidation factor, being mentally inept. And so they just randomly give it to this other character that has zero resemblance to Leatherface so that they can try to pull the rug out from under you. I've never talked to a single person that actually fell for that method, but nonetheless, we have this version of Leatherface. And where the movie really lets us down is that it goes from normal human being with compassion that's actually a good guy to psychotic, mentally broke serial killer within like 10 minutes. And there's just no transition there. Like there should have been another 20 minutes of the movie to develop that a little bit more. He just snaps and then full leather face. And so that's a, a very less effective version of the character than even some of the worst movies above because it just, he doesn't feel like Leatherface. <laughs> you just give a guy a chainsaw and he's Leatherface. No, no, not quite. Number seven is gonna be the first version of Old Man Leatherface we get in Texas Chainsaw 3D. And um, though I think this movie is an absolute train wreck, and we can argue whether or not it's an unwatchable train wreck or it crosses the line into so bad that it's good, because it's certainly a movie that kind of has its feet planted in both sides of that argument. The version of Leatherface that we get here is performed pretty decent and looks pretty decent and is utilized pretty well as the bad guy side of Leatherface, but then the movie pulls a gigantic switcheroo in the third act and decides to try to make Leatherface an anti-hero and tries to make the police force in this Texas town the true villains. 
what the fuck are you doing? Now, I've gone on record numerous times that the best villains, the most interesting villains, are the ones that have multi-layers to them, that don't necessarily think they're the bad guy, that certainly has a worldview that's through a certain lens you could kind of understand their motivations. Leatherface is not that. Leatherface is absolute fucking creep that is murdering and dismembering people for decades with a chainsaw. There is no path to redemption for this character. What the fuck were you thinking? Numero seis is going to be the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Now, while I really enjoy this movie, it's one of my favorite Texas Chainsaw films, the Leatherface version that we get here is very deliberately goofy. He's kind of clowned up. Uh, he's played for laughs. Everything that was disturbing about that take in the first film is kind of played for laughs here, is played to much more of a black comedy intentionally. And I think that it works for the movie itself, but when you're ranking him amongst all these other Leatherfaces, he falls very short because there's nothing about this guy that's intimidating. There's nothing about him that's scary. There's nothing about him that's particularly iconic, especially following the first film, which many would argue is the most iconic iteration of that character. This is a gigantic uh, underswing. And so you get this guy that's running around and you know, he's doing this little shaky thing that he does with the, the chainsaw that's annoying for me. And he's very much still in the vein of kind of the puppet on the string, especially for Chop Top in this movie, but he's getting talked down to and yelled at, similar to the first film, but it just, it's different. It, 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 he's played as a child here, but it's like a goofy child, not a child where you're like, holy fuck, that thing could snap at any moment, like the original. So I think it's perfect for the film they were going for, but far from my preferred version of Leatherface. Number five is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 Leatherface. Now this character honestly fits perfectly in the middle because I have no passionate feelings one way or the other about him. I, this is the most boring and bland and forgettable chapter in this entire franchise for better or worse. And I kind of fit the character, the version of Leatherface that we get in this movie also into that character, uh, that category. But for me, I will stick him above the ones below it because he's still played serious as a slasher character. He's beefed up, he's got fucked up teeth and a pretty decent look about him. He gets the coolest chainsaw in the entire franchise. So there's elements to him that are done well. He just happens to be stuck in a shitty movie. Number four, I'm actually going to give to the new version of Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Now, my main criticism of this character and one of my bigger criticisms of the movie is that they kind of start to turn Leatherface into Michael Myers or Jason, giving him a little bit too much smarts. They're letting him set traps. They're letting him have some premeditated motives and things like that. Things that I, I don't ever associate with the character of Leatherface and I don't think ever should be associated with him. So honestly, if they didn't have that, I probably would have him higher because the look from just the build of him, the, the physical stature of this Leatherface to the way that his actual mask and everything looks, and the way that he holds a chainsaw, the way that he runs and everything, I actually think is pretty damn good. The movie is fine. It also fits comfortably in the middle. I think that it's a very deliberately more of a generic style slasher film where you could pretty much put any killer in this movie and it would work just fine. They just happen to focus on Leatherface. And if you're here for slasher tropes and a lot of kills, I think it delivers a lot of fun. If you're here for anything above that, it's a big disappointment. So. It, it fits comfortably right here in the middle. I would not mind at all seeing this guy take on Leatherface again and hopefully a little bit better movie or even a movie that's kind of on par with the one that we just got. If, if that's the direction we're gonna go in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so be it, fine. We can bring that guy back, I'll be happy. Coming in at number three is the Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Now, I'm less of a fan of this movie than it seems most of the fan base is. Uh, it's a weird one for me, because I love these characters, I love this world. Uh, the remake is my favorite of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, so spending more time in that world, I do enjoy it, but I think the first film is just done a lot better. It's better stylistically. I think that they hold back a lot more, which makes it more effective. This film is very, very blood-soaked. It's, it's about setting up all these little prequel details that we weren't asking and just showing a lot of carnage. And so if you're into that, I understand why it's one of your favorites. One thing that I will always say about the beginning is that this has by far the best look of Leatherface, because not only do you get the gigantic Hulk 
of Leatherface that we got in the remake, but his mask looks much better. This is his technical first Leatherface. It's fresh skin. It looks like fresh skin. Uh, his whole like butcher outfit I think is much better in this one so if you're going purely off of looks this would be my number one I think the per, uh, the personality and the um, performance that we get out of the actor Andrew Bjornarski I believe is how you pronounce his last name is damn near on par with the first film I just like the first film better so this this top three are a tight race for me this one now at this point is just ranking based off of how I like the movies. Coming in at number two for me is going to be Gunnar Hansen from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, if you want all my thoughts on these movies, of course, check out my ranking of the films. And I also reviewed all these films years ago, and most of my thoughts are pretty much consistent with what they were back then. So if you want more in-depth thoughts, please check those out. I'll try to put a card up here while I'm saying this. But number two is Gunnar Hansen, because while I think that uh, he's the most iconic. I think he's the one that most people would put as their favorites, and he's the one that started it all. Of course, credit where credit is due. There is a, a lot of different approaches here with this character to where there's um, the intimidation factor depends entirely on whether or not you like physical presence or you just like the disturbing, demented nature of what this character is because he's a man-child in this. He is mentally inept. He is yelled at and screamed at like a little dog by uh, Drayton and every other character in the film. And so while for the first half more of the movie, he's just this, no pun intended, faceless villain that is chasing around all these kids one by one and taking them out. Once you start to get into the family coming together, leading up to the dinner scene and all of that, uh, I think that he kind of washes to the background a bit and the family becomes the main character, which is something that the films have certainly gotten away from the more that Leather Leatherface has gotten popular. So strictly for that small reason alone, I think that my number one stands out just a little bit more. And of course, process of elimination number one is the Leatherface from the remake. I think that this guy is the most intimidating actor by far to portray Leatherface. Of course, this is my favorite movie. That gives him a little bit of a points bump there. But I also think that he's the most well effective and the well utilized of these Leatherfaces for me personally. I think that the physical intimidation factor of this Leatherface is off the charts. I think the look of him is pretty damn good. A lot of criticism about the look of his his leather face, like it's aged skin, it doesn't look right. I've never had a problem with it until people started pointing it out and I'm like, Ugh. sure the beginning's better, but that, that leather face looks good. <laughs> and even the scene where he puts on Kemper's face, I love that scene, I think it's effective. So his intimidation factor as the, not titular villain, but kind of the, the landmark villain of this movie is perfect for me. And even when you get into knowing more of the family characters, especially Arlie Ermey, of course the family becomes a bigger character by the end of it, but I don't think the remake ever loses sight of Leatherface being your main villain, your main intimidation factor, like I felt the original does just slightly. When you get to that whole sequence where uh, Jessica Biel is running through this slaughterhouse and Leatherface is there after her, you forget about all the other characters because he always just draws your eyes and your attention. So for me, he's the best version of this character, maybe the best version we're ever going to get. And so Leatherface from the 2003 remake is my number one. So what do you guys think? How do you rank the leather faces? Which ones do you prefer? Why do you prefer them? Does the movies have anything to do with your ranking? Are you going purely off of the look or the acting? Let me know down below your method to your madness, please. And we will talk about all nine of these leather faces. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this franchise. I'm sure I'll be talking about it again at some point, depending on how successful this movie is. But I got a lot of backlog of Texas Chainsaw Massacre content to check out. We're in the middle of a Wes Craven review series right now, and I'm about to wrap up also a little mini detour in the Hills Have Eyes franchise where I'm reviewing those four movies and ranking them. So let me know all of your thoughts down below, but please hit the subscribe button to stick around for all of those future videos. Thank you guys for watching as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.